students in this session we will learn about amoset larva and its significance amoset is a larva of petromyzon so you should recollect that uh, while discussing the classification of chordates we said uh, it is divided into two divisions one is um, agnatha and gnathostomata agnathans are the ones without jaws and uh, gnathostomatans includes all the vertebrates with jaws so here amoset larva falls like it is a larva of petromyzon and petromyzon falls under it comes under cyclostomata which is a agnathan so as you all know cyclostomata means circular mouth bearing organisms so the best examples of these cyclostomatans are the petromyzon and mixin now why this amoset larva is so important uh, why we need to study in detail you will understand by the end of this session so here we will try to learn how these amoset larva is formed and what is its structure and how it metamorphoses into a adult petromyzon this is very interesting uh, when compared to all other larval forms and i hope you enjoyed this session so as we said amoset is a larva of petromyzon and in petromyzon the sexes are uh, separate the differentiation of gonads takes place quite lately and in amoset larva it has an hermaphroditic gonad which contains both oocyte and the spermatocytes so at sexual maturity a single large gonad fills most of the abdominal cavity and there is no genital duct here so the mature eggs or the sperm they escape from gonad into the coelom and it pass through the genital pores into the urinogenital sinus and leave the body through this urinogenital opening into the surrounding water so in early spring or summer these lampreys what are lampreys they are the common name for petromyzon they become sexually mature and they migrate into neighboring fresh water or river for breeding this you should remember the petromyzons are um ocean dwelling uh, uh, cyclostomes they live in uh, saline water and they move to fresh water or river for breeding purpose so they migrate from ocean to the sea so uh, once they move they perform a very interesting and unusual kind of behavior wherein with the help of their buccal funnels we said they are circular mouthed organisms right so with the help of their buccal funnels the males they move pebbles pebbles means small small stones from a sandy bottom and they form a nest nest means in the form of a shallow rounded depression or a pit okay so when a female attaches to a stone in the nest this male winds up winds his tail around the female and then the eggs and the sperms are discharged into that pit now this shallow pit which is made by one pair this can be used by many pairs to spawn okay like many uh, um, you know petromyzons can use that nest for the purpose of spawning now once the gametes are released fertilization is obviously external because the gametes has been released into the external environment which is taking place in water and guess what a female i mean a large uh, female of uh, female uh, sea lamprey it can lay up to 236000 eggs it's so interesting i again repeat the number they lay up to 236000 eggs that is the abil egg laying ability of these uh, lampreys so once the eggs are laid they are telolecithal types 
having a good amount of yolk in it cleavage becomes or uh, cleavage is holoplastic unequal then gastrulation takes place by the process of invagination then blastopore formation takes place which in turn um, you know gets converted into anus and then uh, development of nervous system takes place and here the development of nervous system in this amoset larva is very unique in which it develops in the form of a solid card or a keel and then it forms a um, hollow cavity inside and this type of formation of central nervous system is called as thickened keel method okay this is one more unique feature of this uh, amoset larva or in you know in a uh, lampreys now let us learn uh, the structure of with this introduction let us uh, focus on the structure of amoset larva how it looks like or what are its features and followed by how it metamorphoses into an adult its process of metamorphosis and what is the significance of this amoset larva now when you look at the structure of an amoset larva uh, here we said fertilization is um, external and once the fertilization occurs the eggs will hatch in about 3 weeks uh, about 3 weeks they form a very minute transparent larva called as amoset and this larva they measure about 1 cm in length and they will be transparent earlier this larva when they hatch they were so different from their parents like if you know these petromyzoans are parasitic forms they go and attach to the base of the larger fish with the help of their suctorial mouth and they lead a parasitic life but these larvae the amosets they are free living forms they lived in burrows they feed uh, through their buccal funnels just like that of amphioxus i hope you remember the feeding mechanism in amphioxus wherein you learned about the oral herd the oral cirri which surrounds this oral herd then the incoming water will bring the food and it enters into the buccal funnel then to the vestibule and then through the you know velum the hash expate and then into the pharynx so this amoset larva and one more thing amphioxus it belongs to a uh, amphioxus is a cephalochordate isn't it so here the larva of petromyzoan which is an a uh, cyclostome this is resembling a cephalochordate so then we should be able to draw some conclusion based on this resemblance so at the back your back of your mind just keep that feeding mechanism of amphioxus and their structures and then it becomes easy for you to relate the structure of amoset larva with that of amphioxus so because of their um, indifferent uh, structure that like amoset larva does not resemble petromyzoan exactly so because of that they were classified into a separate genus but then later they learned that this is a larva of petromyzoan and hence it should be classified under uh, cyclostomatans only so at first when these uh, amoset larvae hatch there be about 7 mm in length there will be 7 mm in length and they stay in the nest and once they grow about 15 mm in long they quit the nest and then they burrow in mud and sand you know quiet water each larva it constructs and inhabits a v or a u shaped tunnel the larval period starts from 3 to 7 years and according to species during which they grow up to 170 mm around 1.7 cm and they become opaque so when they were hatched they were transparent larva later they become opaque 
and they exhibit a very longer um, larval period uh, which extends from 3 to 7 years the amosite larva is of great importance because of its resemblance with that of a cephalochordata which is a protochordate now when you observe the structure of this um, a fully formed amosite larva it has got so this is how it looks like it's a transfer section of this amosite larva its body is eel like and it differs from the adult in several respects it has a continuous single median dorsal fin running all along the length of the body it is blind it is toothless and it is non parasitic filter feeder I hope you remember this term filter feeder because we discussed the same with Ampioxis as well. Feeding and respiration they are like uh, typically like that of Branchiostoma or the Ampioxis. It has no suctorial buccal funnel but it has got a semicircular upper lip or the oral hood around the mouth. A mouth here it has a transverse lower lip and here it emerges from its burrows in the night and it feed on the bottom organic ooze containing unicellular algae and bacteria which are caught on the floor of the pharynx. Uh, how food is trapped in the pharynx because it has an endostyle which in turn secrete mucus and this mucus secreted by the endostyle of the pharynx that traps all the food material that comes along with the water current. Now our vellum uh, is made up of muscular flaps. It uh, here you can see in the diagram. Uh, yeah. Here you can see vellum which is uh, like a muscular flaps which in turn controls the movement of water. Uh, controls in the sense it regulates the entry of water current into the pharynx and uh, then it continues posteriorly into esophagus. There are seven pairs of gill pouches are present each with a uh, internal gill slit. You can count the number of um, uh, pharyngeal gill bars here which uh, amounts to 7 and um, each one contains an external gill, sl uh, gill slit which opens into the exterior. The branchial basket supporting the pharyngeal wall alternately expands and contracts which in turn helps to draw the water through the mouth into the pharynx and pumping out through the external gill slits. Thus water circulation here is completely by muscular activity. Whereas in case of amphioxis or branchiostoma if you remember their cilia played a very important role in uh, moving off the food particles of, of water all along the length of the alimentary canal. Here it is completely by muscular activity. Now this is explained on the basis as an uh, uh, evolutionary development for engulfing larger pieces of food. Whereas in Amphioxus we said it prevents the oral cirri, you know they get tangled and form a sieve like structure thus preventing the entry of larger particles. Here because of this muscular action it can afford to uh, take in larger particles of food also. Then in addition to this um, liver, bile duct, gallbladder and protonephros are present in amosite larva. Pericardial cavity enclosing heart it connects with the coelom. And then paired eyes remain hidden under the skin and muscles and hence we said this larva is blind. And it has got an unpaired median uh, pineal eye which is well developed but hypofacial and nasal sacs are poorly developed in case of amosite larva. 
so all these points we have said already now this describes the structure of an amosite larva now let us understand what are the changes that it undergoes during the process of metamorphosis like once this larva um, takes the path of converting it into an adult what are the changes that takes place the main changes are we said that this ex uh, exhibits a prolonged larval life of about 3 to 7 years and in these 7 years this amosites undergo several uh, changes in order to metamorphose into a uh, adult form the first one includes the oral hood get replaced by a suctorial buccal funnel with strong and sharp teeth tongue and rounded mouth and complex musculature and all these structures help them to lead a parasitic life endostyle changes into a thyroid gland below the pharynx vellum becomes reduced to guard the opening of respiratory pharynx only then esophagus separates from the respiratory pharynx which becomes like a blind sac gallbladder and bile duct they disappear because there will be change in the feeding habit of this amosite larva gills develop into gill pouches the pronephros get replaced by a mesonephros Paired eyes become uncovered and functional. So an adult petromyzon is not blind. It's only the larva that is blind. So that gets uncovered and becomes functional. Single median nostril shifts to the top of head. And then nasohypophyseal sac grows backwards. The nasal sac becomes folded internally. And continuous dorsal fin becomes divided into two. Pericardial cavity becomes completely cut off from the coelom and the spinal cord becomes dorsoventrally flattened. The skin color changes from yellow brown to mottled greenish brown. So after all these changes, uh, after metamorphosis, the young lampreys swim down to the sea where they remain for 3 or 4 years. Now where did all these changes occur? All these changes occurred in the river. So once they exhibit all these changes and when they become an adult, they want to go back to their parental habitat wherein they swim back to the sea and in the sea they remain for 3 to 4 years before they reach, uh, before reaching maturity. When they once again migrate, once they are matured, once they attain maturity, again they move from oceans to fresh water for the purpose of spawning. And once these uh, spawn, they die. Okay, so gonads become mature at the time when adults return to river for spawning and uh, maybe because of the long journey that it undertakes without any feeding once they spawn they may not have enough of energy to go back to their parental uh, to their original habitat but there are few instances which says few of them migrate back and most of them die once they spawn so this is how the uh, metamorphosis occurs in amosite larva now what is the significance of this amosite larva as we discussed this amosite larva it exhibits striking resemblance with that of branchiostoma which is a cephalocordate so because of this it uh, it shows that it's a very primitive and it gives a generalized vertebrate structure okay so since it the it gives us an idea as to how a vertebrate structure look like and because of uh, this resemblance it also acts as a connecting link between amphioxus which is a cephalocordate and cyclostomes okay this uh, resemblance helps us to understand how uh, maybe these two would have originated from a common ancestor because here we can uh, 
clearly know the morphological differences uh, morphological similarity between a cephalochordate which is a protochordate and a larva of a agnathan right so this resemblance tells us that these two could have originated from a common ancestor so that's how the studying this amosite larva uh, plays an uh, important role in understanding this similarities i hope i have made it clear and uh, you all you all have understood the structure and metamorphosis of amosite larva thank you for listening these are the references from which the content has been taken thank you